fear is a very important thing in boxing. Of course, all fighters are afraid. Stranger may seem to people who watch the fight. Now, fear is like fire. If you let it get out of control, it will destroy you and everything around you. You manage to control it, you can make it work for you. This is the secret truth to motivation. You might just think motivation is a desire, a pull towards doing something, but as with the definition, it's more of the intent and reason towards doing something. And it can involve other things than just desire. As I've already played the clip of Costamato, fear is a more powerful motivator when it comes to motivation. Now I'm essentially stealing this off uh, Chris Williamson podcast with Alex Ramotsu. I think it's originally from Jordan Peterson. He mentioned this experiment, but there is an experiment with starving rats in a tube and their tails are attached to a spring and they're gonna waft some cheese over the top of the tube. And as the rats will pull, obviously, the measurement of the force of the spring is like the effort, essentially. So they do that experiment and they do another experiment exactly the same, but what they change this time is they waft the scent of a cat underneath the tube. And they actually found out the rats pulled harder. It's not just a desire to get something that will make you work as hard as you can, but the fear of, well, I guess death essentially, because that's all fear is. That's what fear boils down to. Whenever you have fear for, I don't know, your friends not liking you, that is essentially fear of dying because back in god knows how long ago 10,000 years ago if people didn't like you and they kicked you out of the group and they ostracized you of the tribe you would die you would die alone every fear is baked into i'm probably gonna die <laughs> death is the biggest motivator but any sort of fear is gonna lead you to try as hard as possible with this certain desire as well and to steal more shit from chris williamson uh the biggest three things amongst high achievers is oh, f i have to get this right major tunnel vision on a goal that, like that's all they focus on and that's kind of reflected in the experiment with, with literally just a tube and them looking up cheese because they're starving and shit crippling insufficiency in crippling insufficiency of themselves so they always feel insufficient they fear being a failure or whatever it is right they fear failing fear being a fucking loser who knows and the third thing is a superiority complex so they think they're better than everyone else um i don't know how that could be reflected in an experiment but those are the three things i am stealing all this off the chris williamson podcast <laughs> but i mean you can just see it in any successful person this is especially clear in any high achievers they all have that fear they all have that insecurity of themselves and that drives them to do better if they've taken control of it and just allowed themselves to achieve so much further and i can kind of like relate to this if you think of like any bodybuilder ever they were probably bullied they were probably made ashamed of for their bodies before they actually decided to go to the gym or whatever right they had a huge crippling insecurity and they have managed to channel it and use it to their own advantage. So how do we actually apply this? If you made it this far, I want you to do this exercise with me. It's just gonna be some questions. It's not gonna be that difficult. Hopefully. What insecurities slash flaws do you have? And it could be like getting judged or you disliked. Uh, do you think you're not loved? Do you think you're not enough? And the second question is of that is, is it justified? is there things evidence towards that statement because it can and i'll give you an example when i was when i was younger i was fat i was chubby and you know i was pretty young so maybe i don't really get to control what i eat but i feel like that's just to cope because you know what it's whatever your parents bring you to the house or whatever but largely i was still chubby and I could have just said it was my genetics, it was because my mom ate too much when she was pregnant and I did all those things but at the end of the day there was evidence to suggest me being chubby and I was very embarrassed, I was kind of shamed for it and it really just wasn't a pleasant time. You have to sort of just look at yourself in the mirror, in this case kind of literally, and just have to really look at yourself for all your flaws and insecurities. And that can be very difficult. <laughs> I literally cried doing this. 
um, exercise when I did it back then. But the baseline towards any sort of improvement is reflection, reflection on yourself, honestly, and somewhat brutally, like you have to be brutally honest with yourself when you actually want to use your insecurities as weapons and an advantage rather than just making you go down further, you can just make it towards where you go up more. And the thing is, if you, if you can reflect on your insecurities and your flaws and manage to use them, that is some of the most powerful motivators like in existence. Think of like David Goggins, for example, he used to get beat as a kid, he used to get bullied because he had learning disabilities. And he just has an endless back catalogue of these fucking demons, these demons, to where he can just channel it whenever he needs to. And obviously that came from practice, channeling it and reflection. And it, it's a painful process because, I mean, no one wants, to, like, it hurts your ego at the end of the day. It just hurts your ego to do that. But, I mean, look at him. He's fucking <laughs> powering boats and dogs and shit, you know what I mean? Like running 20 miles every day, running ultra marathons, blah, blah, blah. Ultimately, it's that pain that will give you that huge motivation if you can manage to do this exercise of like introspecting to herself and I kind of gave a brief introspection for you but if you did manage to make it this far I don't my watch time is just absolutely dreadful so I don't know how long people have watched this for but if you have managed to make it this far and if you do do the exercises hopefully it's a start uh, hopefully you can get off this stupid video and actually think through it further maybe even write it down I would highly suggest writing all this down so you can like look back at it and be like, oh, um, this and this and this and this, right? You have to sort of like lean into your pain and your insecurities and all of that to somewhat make it your bitch at the end of the day. That's a very good analogy I like using because I like being able to control it. I don't like it controlling over me. That's just, you're just being a bitch. Make it your bitch, you know what I mean? Lean into the pain, um, use it as drive, use it as motivation and also have a goal, have some tunnel vision towards that goal, and you're probably gonna fucking achieve that at the end of the day. It's not that difficult. I'm joking, it, I'm not joking, it, it's just fucking difficult. Hopefully this video has helped somewhat, and you can get up and go what you need to do. Uh, go and make that next step. And as always, from hate to love.